Amen. <clears throat> this morning, you might have wondered where we're going with our scripture reading, which was found in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4. Who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes? Solomon did. That's right. The wisest man that has ever lived, second to Jesus, but the wisest man that will ever live, Solomon. There tells us, when you make a vow to God, what is he saying? Keep it. When you make a vow to God, keep it. He continues saying, it is better not to vow than to vow and not keep it. And so, <clears throat> we're not going to talk about money as how the text can imply as well, but keeping our vows to God. And this morning I want to take you to Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. We're going to look at, at a character in the Bible that we are that most of us may be familiar with, and his name is Lot. Do we remember who Lot was? What, what, do we, what do we, you know, when we think of Lot, what comes to our mind? The nephew of Abraham, very good. What else? Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, yes, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, does his wife come to mind? You know, Jesus says, remember Lot's wife, remember Lot's wife, Sodom and Gomorrah, nephew of, of Abraham, uh, the angels going and pulling Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, there in Genesis chapter 13, Abraham and Lot have so much wealth and so much cattle, so much animals, so much livestock that their workers aren't getting along as far as there isn't enough land for, for, for both of us here. And so what ends up happening? They end up, they end up separating and uh, Abraham, Abraham trying to keep the peace, he says, look around and you pick where you want to go. And wherever you pick, I'll go the other way. And so the Bible there tells us, in Genesis 13, verse 10, it says, And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plains of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. So there Lot went that way, and Abraham went another direction. You know, the, the Bible tells us that Lot was a righteous man as well. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse, 4, verse 7, that Lot was a righteous man. But here in Genesis chapter 13, if you go a little bit before this incident where they separated, to Genesis chapter 11, verse 26, God had called Abraham to leave, right? To leave, to leave Ur, to leave the land of the Chaldeans, which can also be known as Babylon uh, in modern days today. But there in Genesis chapter 11, verse 26, it says, Now Terah lived 70 years and begot who? Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Abram is Abraham before God changed his name to Abraham. But here, Abram is one of the sons of Terah. Verse 27 says, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And that's how he is the nephew of Abraham. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans, verse 29, Then Abram and Nahor took wives, and the names of Abram's wife was Sarai, uh, and, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of 
Milcah and the father of Isaac. But Sarai was barren. She had no children. And Terah took his son Abraham, his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of where? Of Canaan. This is where God had called Abraham to go. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So here we see, we see the family. We see Abraham's family. They all left. They all left except for who? Except for Nahor. For whatever reason, the Bible tells us that Nahor did not go with them. If you look at verse, verse, I mean, I'm sorry, Joshua 24, verse 1 and 3, the Bible tells us also, Joshua chapter 24, verse 1 through 3, that Abraham left and his family left Ur. Joshua 24, the Bible says, Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel and Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and their, and their heads for their judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before God and Joshua said to all the people thus said the Lord God of Israel your father including Terah the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor dwelt on the other side of the river in the old times and they served other gods then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river led him throughout all the land of Canaan. Here we see that they were serving other gods and God called Abraham out of that environment and not just Abraham came, but who else? Most of the family came. Most of the family came with Abraham to go to Canaan, to go to Canaan. As individuals, we have to decide in what direction we're going. In what direction our lives are going if we're going to follow that direction our family is going are we going to follow that direction their church is going are we going to follow that direction society are we going to follow that direction we have to decide will i go or will i not go we have to make individual decisions and as you can see in verse 32 of chapter 11 of genesis Chapter 11 of Genesis, verse 32 says, So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in where? In Haran. Verse, chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. In, and in all, no, and in you all, the families of the earth shall be blessed. Notice verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And who went with him? What about his brother? What about the other family? It just says, and Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. Where was Abraham going? Did, did, he was going to Canaan. But did he know where he was going? Not necessarily. If, we, if you look in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. It says, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would afterwards receive as an inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going. God just says, get out, keep going. You see, they had left Ur, but they stopped at Haran. 
And God said, keep on going. The families stayed and established in Haran, but Abraham kept on going, and the Bible says, and Lot went with him. Lot could have stayed with his other uncles there in Haran, with his other families, but he didn't. He followed Abraham. How many of us today would, would go on a journey not knowing where you would be going? One person. I wouldn't. Even when I go to Dallas, I praise the Lord, I have this. <laughs> Amen. I need to know exactly where to turn, where to get off, where to get back on the freeway, if it's a tow road or not a tow road. You know, these smart devices even tell us where the gas stations are, if you want to eat in a specific place, how far the next one is, how close it is. I, know to, I, I like to know exactly where I am going. And not just when I go to Dallas or other places, but even in my life, where am I going? Where are you going? Here Abraham trusted in God. Didn't know where he was going, but Lot went with him. That, that for me really sticks out more than Abraham's call. Because God didn't call Lot to go. God called Abraham to go. But Lot saw in Abraham the call of God. The direction that God wanted Abraham to go. And, God, and Lot said, I'm going to go with you. I'm going with you. Lot made a decision to go with his uncle. He evaluated and concluded that the wisest decision was to follow him. He knew that God had put the call on him to go and he was following it. And he could have stayed with his family there in Haran, but he decided to go. And so we must make a serious decision in the direction in which we want to go. In the direction in which we want to go. Notice the meditation there from Patriarchs and Prophets in the back of your bulletins, page 127. It says, the call from heaven came first. No, the call from heaven first came to Abraham while he dwells in Ur of the, of the Chaldeans. And in obedience to it, he removed to Haran. Thus far, his father's family accompanied him. And we saw that here already in Genesis chapter 13. No, I'm sorry, uh, 11 and 12. That the family, thus far, his father's family accompanied him. For with their idolatry, they united the worship of the true God. Here Abraham remained till the death of Terah, which, as we just read. But from his father's grave, the divine voice bade him to what? Keep going. Don't stop here. Keep going. Go forward. His brother Nahor, with his household, clung to their homes and their idols. They said, we're fine here. We're going to stay. Besides Sarah, his wife, and Abraham, only who came with him? Only Lot. Only Lot, the son of Haran, long since dead, chose to share the patriarch's pilgrim's life. Only Lot. What direction will you follow? What direction will we follow? You see, there, there is... Ellen White predicted that in the last days, people would reject her writings. She, she predicted it there in Selective Messages, Volume 2, page 78, where she says, The very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimonies of the Spirit of God. And then she quotes Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Satan will work, will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimonies. Do you regard this, this sister as God's special messenger for his church? Or do we disregard her? In what direction? Will, will we go in the direction that many disregard her? And you see, friends, 
We believe in the Bible. Amen? Amen. In the Ten Commandments. Amen? In the Eight Commandments or the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments. In the whole Bible or just the New Testament? In the whole Bible. And the same, do we believe in the spirit of prophecy or just in desire of ages? Or just in the patriarchs and prophets? If you, read, if, you, if you accept this sister to be inspired by God as a special messenger for God, then we believe all of her writings. And that's hard to swallow because I have read some writings that step on my toes and make a hole in it. Deep convictions. Because I know my life. I know what some things are not in line with God when I read the testimonies of Jesus. But I can't pick and say, well, you know, this is irrelevant, but I like Desire of Ages. Mm -mm. There is a movement in the church to, to, to make, uh, to be more like the world when it comes to worship. Have you decided in which direction you want to go? The testimony of Jesus tells us what is appropriate for worship as well as scripture. There's a group in Adventism that says that we should stress less the Sabbath. We shouldn't stretch so much the investigative judgment or the health message. The Bible says that Lot chose to go with Abraham. Lot chose to go in the direction of God's people of, of God's chosen people. And so my question is, in what direction will you go? In what direction will you go? Even among the church, there are different directions. Praise the Lord, God's church is going to go to the kingdom. God's church is going to go to the kingdom. But along the way, the Bible predicts and the Bible says there's going to be a shaking. And some may fall out. No, some will fall out. Are we going to follow in that direction, that fall out? Or do we cling to the bride of Christ, to the church? We need to make a decision. Lot here made a decision. I'm going to go with Abraham. Lot went with Abraham. You see, you can go, you can go with a person... You can, you can be with a person, but also not be with a person. Did, did, did I just confuse you? I hope not. You can be with somebody, but yet not be with them. When my wife and I first came to this area from the Rio Grande Valley, from Harlingen, Texas, I first came by myself in August of 2006. And the classes started here at Southwestern in around mid-August or late August, and I came at the beginning of August to come and make sure I did all the paperwork and registration and everything that I needed to do, but especially to look for a place for us to live. I came here, I came to San Antonio, and then from San Antonio I came on, on the Amtrak uh, here to Cleburne, got to Keene, did my work with the university, walked around the city of Keene looking for a place to bring my family. And I found a nice quadruplex, a nice apartment there, down, Sturst, down Third Street, where, where we lived for four or five years. I go inside, and, uh, and, and the realtor is showing me the apartment. <clears throat> it was upstairs, which was a little bit hard when we have a piano that we carry with us. And, uh, but I, I finally called Salid and, and I said, you know, I found an apartment. It's a two-bedroom. Uh, the kitchen looks like this, and, and uh, the, it's got this, this much space. What do you think? Are you, are you with me? Should we get it? She's like, yeah. You know, she was with me in thinking and per not with me here. She wasn't physically here. She was in Harlingen, way down over there. But yet she was with me in thinking, in, the, in, in mind, yes, go ahead, let's get it, I'm with you. It sounds, like, it sounds like a good deal. 
like, like a good place to begin. I gave the deposit. We went, I went back down to the Rio Grande Valley, rented a truck, brought my family, and began our process here in, in this area. When Lot chose to go with Abraham, he went because he understood the call that God put on Abraham, and Lot bought into the idea that Abraham was going in God's direction. He bought into it. He didn't just tag along. He, he could have been comfortable in Haran, but he bought into it. Lot saw the value, the salvation in the call of Abraham. And Lot went with Abraham, not just physically, but also here. Are you and I, are we with Christ? Are we walking with Christ? Not just walking because we come to this beautiful sanctuary, but are we walking here with Christ? Have you bought into walking with Christ? Have you bought into Christianity? Have you made a conscious decision to be with Christ? We need to learn to, to be with Christ, especially on Calvary. We look forward to, and all of us want to be with Christ in glory, but how many of us want to be with Him on Calvary? Where He was naked, bruised, embarrassed, Jesus says, and we should carry our cross. Are we with Christ or just simply part of the church? Now, you can be both. You can be in the church and with Christ. And actually, if you are with Christ, you will be in the church. That's a given. You can be in the church and your name be in the book, but you can be not with Christ. Not with Christ. Here, Abraham made a conscience decision. I'm going to go with my uncle. And what happened to Lot? I'm sorry, Lot made a, a decision. What happened to Lot? There in Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, he was with his uncle. Right? After they, they couldn't work things out there, Lot and his family camped somewhere else close to Sodom, and slowly but surely, not overnight, because the devil works slowly, slowly but surely, Sodom began to affect Lot. To affect to the point that they were now in Sodom, in the city. And when God came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, only because Abraham prayed for his nephew, the angels went in. And only because, because, because God is faithful. What was Abraham's question? Lord, if there is ten, will you still destroy it? And what did God say? No. He went down, right, from 50 and down, 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 down. God, praise the Lord, that God is not willing to destroy any righteous. In this case, how many were righteous? In this, here, in the story of Lot. Lot, and let's say two, Lot and his wife. Okay? Although we know where his wife's heart was. Because she turned to where her heart was. But for the benefit of the doubt here, let's just say two and their children. Yet God went in to rescue them from the destruction. Never forget that, that God will always rescue you and me from any destruction that may come. That may come. So what, what happens there in Genesis 19, verse 15? It says, When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, hurry up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you should be consumed in the punishment of the city. And before we get to, before we get to verse 16, had Sodom and Gomorrah affected Lot and the worldly of Sodom? You know, 
the, the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to be with those two angels, wanted to have relations with them. And what did Lot recommend? This is disgusting, especially for a father who has daughters. He says, no, 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 no. Don't, don't bother with these because he knew they were angels, messengers from God. But what did he say? I have two daughters who have never been with a man. Take them. Of course, the world had affected Lot. But yet here, the angels are coming and telling Lot, hurry up. And verse 16 says, and while he lingered, notice that. The men took hold of his hand. Praise the Lord. While he lingered. You know, I, I praise God that the angels are not like us. Amen. If I would have been that angel going down lots, God is going to destroy. We got to go right now. And he's lingering and lingering. I, would, I said, you know what? You're lost. I'm done. See you later. But he what? He had to take him by his hand and his wife. Hold, he took hold of his hand and his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters. They had to grab on to each one. You know, I don't know how many of your parents ever took you from one place to another place by force. It's happened to me and to my sister when our parents sometimes would say, come here or go, you know, go with your uncle. And, and we lingered. <laughs> and the good old pulling of the ear. <laughs> then I say, come here. All right, and what do you do? You hurt because it hurts to be pulled by your ear. Have you ever been pulled by your ear or by the little hairs in your head? Here, the angels had to take hold because their heart, wasn't it with Abraham? Didn't they decide, I'm going to go with Abraham because I see God's calling in Abraham. He is walking with God. I'm going to be with Abraham. What happened to that? They separate their ways, but slowly the Sodom and Gomorrah begin to affect their lives. Not from one day to the next. When you read their patriarchs and prophets, they began to camp closer and closer and closer until they found a sale, probably or a house or a condo inside of Sodom. Hey, let's, let's, let's just go right into Sodom. And the mind of Sodom began to affect them that they did not want to leave and were lingering and the angels of mercy had to take them by their hand. The Bible says there, <clears throat> and while he lingered, the men took hold of his hands, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. You should, we should underline that. God is merciful to us. Amen. Even when you and I are lingering in obeying Him, are lingering in following His will. The Bible says, He who knows to do right and does not do it, we all know to do right. And yet when we linger, God is still merciful to us and still sends His angels to watch over us on the highways at work. Brings us home safely, gives us meals to eat. The Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. We can start right with Christ. We can. But with time, we can also stray. We can also stray. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus makes it clear in Matthew chapter 7. We may know this verse by memory there in chapter 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in, who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few that find it. We need to take a look at our Christian life and determine if Christ is in front leading us. Are we with Christ? See, some of us, some of us started like Lot. And we're walking with Christ. And within time, with unwillingly or willingly, we begin to deviate. We begin to deviate. But praise the Lord that God's angels and His Spirit is always pulling us and pulling us. Some of us may not even have started with Christ and we're putting it off. And we're putting it off. Today is the first Sabbath of June. And that baptistry is filled right now. Every first Sabbath we fill up the baptistry, whether there's a baptism or not. And if there is somebody here who is putting aside that decision, why? Why? What is keeping you? The Holy Spirit, the angels are pulling you out from the world, out of Satan's domain, and into Christ. And that's why Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4, Solomon said, When you make a vow to God, don't delay it. If you're going to be a Christian, if, you're gonna, if you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. Be a Christian. If you want to do God's will, then do God's will. Then do God's will. And so I just appeal to you this morning. Lot chose. and He made the right choice. I'm going to go with Abraham. I'm going to go with Abraham. And every time you make that choice, I'm going to go with Christ. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow Christ. You're making the right choice. Amen. You're making the right choice. But will you continue to follow Christ? We continue to follow Christ. Praise the Lord and praise God for, the mercy, for His mercy. Who says that the Old Testament does not show mercy? These angels had mercy and had to carry them by their hands or maybe even pick them up. And praise God for His mercy that He shows on us, friends. That He shows on us. And I just appeal to you this morning. Many of us have made our vows because we're here in church. We made, we made commitments to God. Every time a person is baptized... They make a commitment to God. Only you know where you are in that commitment. Are you with God? Or have you strayed to Sodom? And God has to go and pick you up and pull you back out before He rains fire down from heaven. God will rain fire down from heaven. And God is calling and appealing everyone to walk with Him. To walk with Him. Do you want to be a Christian, church? We're going to sing, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my mind, in my walk, in everything. In everything. And if there is somebody here who has put that aside, who has lingered, maybe as Lot lingered, I appeal to you, stop lingering. There's, you're not going to get added much more years to your life because of lingering. Every day we are getting older. Every day is a day closer to when we go to sleep or when Jesus comes. One or the two. 
If you want to stop lingering and making that decision to give your life to God, you have these blue cards on the pews. Just pick one up and put your name on it and give it to me or to Pastor Powell. And make that decision as Lot did to be with Abraham, to be with God, and to stay with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you. I thank you so much <clears throat> because in Lot there are many lessons learned but one that sticks out to me and I hope it sticks out to all of us is that Lot chose to go with your servant and although he deviated you had mercy to bring him out and bring him back to you Lord, help us to choose to be with you. No matter what happens in society, no matter what happens in the world or in the church, to, to be with you. Because soon, soon you will destroy this world. But before you do, you want to take everyone out that is following you. If there's anyone here who needs to make that decision, I pray, Lord, that you touch their hearts, that they may hear your voice, your call, your spirit. And you do not leave them alone until they turn to you. Help us who have made that commitment to remain faithful and continue walking with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.